it's Wes, and it's always an exciting day when Viltrox comes out with a new lens because, for the most part, they do great work at a great price, and we have a lens that is really needed to fill a hole in the market. I am so excited because I love ultra-wide photography. Let's get into this, the Viltrox 16 1.8. This is a unique lens, and I feel like it's directed at me because <laughs> I love this focal length somewhere between 14 and 17 millimeters I just love photography at that not just for real estate photography which I do a lot of but also for portrait for portraiture and fashion and landscape I love this focal length and so I was so excited to see Viltrox come out with it and this is a full frame lens the last lens we tested from Viltrox was the 13 1.4 which seemed ultra wide, but on APS-C, you're not nearly as wide as this lens. Let's do our peel here. Yeah, I kept that on for the review. First of all, as always, we're gonna start with our build quality. As you can see, this is almost entirely metal. Feels great in the hand, has a very classic feel to it. On the side here, we have a couple of function buttons. I can only get one to work on Sony. Maybe later on, we will have more. We have an autofocus manual focus switch. We have a focus meter. I don't know, Zeiss did it with the Batis line, but I feel like it's largely unnecessary. And we have an aperture ring. It feels a little bit plasticky, but for the most part it feels pretty good, and it is declickable. Both rings feel quite good. Now there is an extra hard latch into automatic, which is nice. I would rather have a lock though. Call me picky. If we come around to the back here, we see we have a nice big red rubber O-ring. Honestly, it sticks out further than the Sony ones do. We have a USB-C port so that we can easily do firmware updates, just drag and drop from Viltrox. It is so easy. I wish everyone else would do this. People were saying that you couldn't weather seal a lens if you had that, but as you can see, the USB-C port is inside the weather sealed area. On the front here, we have our lens hood, which is a nice sturdy lens hood. It's plastic, dual tone, very fancy, but my complaint with it is it comes off too easily. You have this pedal shape, and so it can easily catch on something, and I've had this drop off of my lens a few times while using the camera. It's not like the G Master ones that has a lock on the side. And honestly, I wouldn't expect that from most third-party lenses to be that fancy, but everything else about this lens is that fancy. It is just a fantastic design. I had said with the previous lens, the 13 1.4, that Viltrox is clearly going up market, and they've pretty much gone the whole way up market at this point. Like, there is almost nothing that this lens is missing. It is weather sealed and it is solid. It's just this lens hood comes off too easily. On the front here we have a 77 millimeter filter thread which is great because I already have lots of 77 millimeter lenses and filters that I can put on front of that. So overall our build quality is a 9.5 out of 10 if it weren't for the fact that the lens hood keeps falling off on me. Handling and usability. Well this has pretty much everything. Weather seal, aperture ring, from 1.8 all the way to 22, autofocus, manual focus, function buttons, clickable, declickable. We have the distance gauge. Let's uh, put it on a camera here so we can see that in action. I beat up A9. There we go, I'll switch it to manual focus. It is very bright, very crisp display. Just completely overkill. It's a color display. Maybe it's only two colors, but no, I see green in there too. While editing, I tried to scratch it with a razor blade and I couldn't, so this is a glass screen. Fantastic. That feels really nice. Man, this lens is nuts. <laughs> now one caveat for usability. It occasionally gave me lockups in camera, but if you get that, I'm used to third-party lenses. All you need to do is either this, snap it off and back on again, 
and it reinitializes the lens. And if that doesn't work, you do this, obviously not while writing to a card, and that reinitializes the whole camera, it just takes a couple seconds. Now I'm not saying that's a good thing, <laughs> but I am saying that if you are prepared for that to happen, it's not a big deal and you can resolve it very quickly without looking like you're losing your mind in front of your clients. You can always get it back. And to be perfectly clear, this is something that can happen with a first party lens, whether if the contacts are dirty and not making full contact, or if the lens fails, it's a good skill to know as a professional photographer. Now, thankfully, firmware updates are due to come and they're super easy to put onto this lens. Another great feature is that this is a ultra-low distortion, ultra-wide lens. There's hardly any distortion, which shocked me. I thought this was going to be full of distortion, but it is a larger lens, so there was room for correction in here. We have a nine-bladed aperture. Because it's all metal, it, it is a pretty heavy lens. Here is the Sony 16-35G Master, and as you can see, it is only a tiny bit smaller. And it's only a tiny bit lighter. This is about a pound and a half. This one's just a little bit lighter because this one uses some like high density polycarbonates to keep the weight down. This one, not as much, a lot of metal in here. But this is a 1.8 and this is a 2.8. So this is a very full featured lens. Unfortunately, again, the lens hood comes off too easily. But overall, because this has all the bells and whistles on it, and it feels great in the hand, it's a 9 out of 10 for handling and usability. Focus performance. The 13 1.4, again, I keep bringing that one up, was fantastic. Kind of surprised me for autofocus performance, but this one isn't quite as good. In low light, once you pass like ISO 640, you have to be wide open on this lens. If you try to shoot in low light with narrower apertures, this thing gets unreliable, and even wide open past ISO 640 territory, it's just, it's not as reliable and sometimes has trouble locking on. It's not as snappy as the 13 1.4 was either. And a lot of the time I had to switch to AFS or manual focus in lower light scenarios to get this to work great. Overall, overall with stuff like IAF, face AF, object tracking, stuff like that, it did work fantastically with all the advanced stuff. And when it comes to video, if there is decent light, the video autofocus was just fantastic. It was smooth and natural and reliable. to low light and speed is just not tip top I'm gonna to give that an 8 out of 10 for focus image quality this is hard to do with an ultra wide lens especially with a wider aperture but shooting wide open you hardly ever get chromatic aberration there is almost no distortion just a little bit significantly less distortion and CA than the 16 to 35 G master now we are expecting this lens to be updated soon maybe the new one will be a little bit better for that Wide open at 1.8, not the sharpest lens. Stopping this down to 2.2 becomes very usably sharp. 1.8, you have a slightly soft look to it. I would still call it usable for a lot of things. Once you get to 2.8, this lens is very nearly as sharp as the G Master for significantly less money. But then once you get up to around F16, F22, especially at F22, it is very soft again. Maybe I just got a good copy, I don't know, but this is very impressive. Just don't expect amazing performance wide open. Additionally, another surprise, we're seeing very little vignetting. I was expecting heavy vignetting right up to 5.6, but there's just a little bit at 1.8, and in the medium apertures, there is hardly any. Crazy for such a wide angle lens. Flare resistance, I was shocked, is very good. At times, again, better than this G Master lens. At times worse, but overall, I've got to give this image quality of 8 out of 10. It's funny, if this was a 2.8 lens that was just as sharp a 2.8 as it already is, this would have a higher score. But because it's just a little bit soft at 1.8, just a little bit soft, it's an 8 out of 10. Image character. 
Honestly, this is where I was expecting this lens to excel, and where it doesn't. Because the flare resistance is so good, like, I love taking those ultra-wide shots and getting crazy lens flares and stuff. This one doesn't do that so much. We have very subdued lens flares. The sun stars are pretty good, but not excellent. The bokeh, which you can actually get with a 16mm lens, which is crazy. It's generally not distracting, can be a little bit nervous, because if you look close at the bokeh, you have some onion ringing going on, we have some heavy edging going on. In these cat's eye bokeh tests, please excuse the little dots inside the bokeh balls and the black splotches. I had some massive dust on the back of my lens that I did not notice, and Maggie refused to do a reshoot. <laughs> And if you look closely, there is almost no cat's eyeing or footballing to the bokeh whatsoever that stays around from edge to edge of the frame. Very interesting. Overall, the image character is good but not great. It's a 7.5 out of 10. Value. This is where we expect Viltrux to do well, and I think you already know how this is going to go. So, this G Master lens is over $2,000. We're not. It's not going to be compared because it's a 2.8 and it's a zoom. This lens comes in at $550. I don't know if that sounds like a lot to you, but it shouldn't. We have very little to compare this to because they've struck so hard into a niche here. We have the Laowa 15 f2 manual focus lens for $750. Yeah, that's a 0D lens, but this is very close to being 0D on its own. And in many ways, I feel like this lens makes that Laowa pretty much obsolete. We have the Sony 14 1.8, pretty close, $1,600, the Sigma 14 1.8, $1,600, it's almost nothing else to compare this to. <laughs> At a third of the price of the autofocus competition, this is a 10 out of 10, it would be a 12 or a 15 if I could. I am surprised they're asking as little as they are for this lens, I don't want to jinx this, <laughs> but this is nuts, this price is phenomenal. Alright, let's look at our score. We add that all up together, we get a total score of 86.7%. And that comes in at number 5 on my list here, if we have a look. And yeah, that is a tie with the Sony 24 1.4 G Master lens. Wow, that flew right up the score charts. I was expecting to enjoy this lens, but I was not expecting it to perform this well. Sure, if Sony came out with uh, a 16 1.8, it'll probably be a little bit sharper wide open. Maybe the bokeh will be a little, little bit cleaner, but it'll cost three or four times as much. <laughs> Just amazing. If you want to pick up one of these lens, which I highly recommend that you do, there are links down in the description below to help support this channel and to feed my fat cats. So, until next time, this lens is staying on my camera, and I'm going to go take some photos. <laughs>